Hello my crafting friends and welcome to my channel Heidi Sample DIY. In today's episode we're going to be doing some look for lesses that are high end. I was on Antique Farmhouse and Amazon over this last week and I found a couple things I really want to do. Now let's get crafting. I thought this domed bird cage was so beautiful and I wanted to make my own version of it and I found the perfect things from the Dollar Tree to be able to do that. We're going to take one of these mirror round frames from their home section. We need three of these smaller circles from these wooden bamboo circles. And then we need eight dowel sticks from the crafting section. Go ahead and take your first circle and we're going to measure it where it's a little bit off from being halfway in the middle to cut. And you're going to see here in just a second, one side is going to be a little bit shorter and there's a reason for that. When I line up the top part of these together, you can see that it's shorter here. Why we needed to do that was so that one of them, the smaller one, is going to go inside our second ring and then the other part, the longer one, is going to come over the top for the second part of the dome. And the reason why we need to do that is so that it makes it that full reach all the way over and around without it looking short on the sides. Now make sure you get everything in place before your hot glue starts to dry so that it's not crooked and it's where you want it to be. Now we're going to take those craft sticks. Be careful with this part because it's easy to burn your fingers if that dowel stick rolls in your fingers. But go ahead and glue two of them together and then I'm going to just add some more glue in between that joint and go down it with some hot glue and a popsicle stick so that it's really stuck in place and nice and strong. Then go ahead and glue them on the inside of your dome that you created the top and you're going to now take a third one of those circles and you can use embroidery hoops for this too by the way. This totally works with the embroidery hoops as well if you can find the right size to fit in these frames. So you can see that I added a third one and I glued those on to the dowel sticks with that circle and I'm going to go ahead and remove the mirror off of the inside of that frame because we don't want that piece in there since we're going to just be simply using the frame and the back cardboard piece. Go ahead and glue that piece on there and then add on some more glue around the sides and you can see that these smaller circles fit inside of the frame perfectly. It was like they were meant to be together. Go ahead and paint your dome whatever color you want. I'm going to go with black so we have that beautiful antique farmhouse look almost primitive farmhouse, which I just think that is such a beautiful look, especially around springtime going into summer. I love the black with the rust. So I added on some brown paint, some cinnamon. Once it was dried, I went ahead, dusted it off, and then I came back in with some black paint to touch up anywhere I felt like there was too much rust. I have been eyeing these bird mirrors for the longest time at Antique Farmhouse and I've just decided, you know what, they have these round frames at the Dollar Tree. We're going to make our own version of this. So go ahead and grab two of those mirror frames and then one of these plant hangers. We're going to go ahead and take off the back so that we can get that out of the way. Take that plant hanger, open up the hook so we can get to those chains. We're going to need two of these chains for our two different mirrors because there are three strands on each one of those hooks and we're going to need four of these bottom hooks that can go into the frame. So when you pick these up, make sure you get two of these packs of chains. Now at this point, you can see that I've added on a second hook. So the one chain has two hooks at the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and remove four of these chains and add back on that hook because we're going to use these two hooks on the end to be able to go into the frame. So you can see here that I'm just removing the four chains that we don't need because we don't want it to be too long. And then I'm just going to make sure the measurement's right. 
I'm going to take my crop a dowel because it goes through hard plastic and metal. I love this tool. I'll link it down below, but this tool is like my all-time favorite in my craft room. It's actually a eyelet smasher, <laughs> eyelet tool for scrapbooking. I love this tool so much. So go ahead and punch out two holes, and I'm going to show you how I go ahead and put that hook in. I open up the hook. I'm going to come in on the first hole punch closest to the middle of that frame. I'm going to bring it down in there, push it in a little bit. You need to open up that hook just a tiny bit to get it through the second hole. And then I'm going to pull it up. And at this point, you can take that open hook and close it. I know that was kind of wordy, so hopefully that all made sense. <laughs> but once you got those both sides on, put that to the side, and now we're going to make our little birds out of foil. I have fallen in love with foil, friends. I actually have some really cool DIYs coming here soon on my channel. So if you're a new subscriber, click the subscribe button so you don't miss these foil DIYs that are coming. Now I'm going to do this in real time. I'm not going to speed this up because I want you to see all the steps on how I made this little bird. My kids actually were all saying it looked more like a duck, but I like ducks too. So let's just call it a duck for now. <laughs> So I went ahead and created the neck and the head, and then I'm now working on the body. You can see that the body is a little bit bigger, and I'm just going to keep curving around the bottom of the duck or bird, whichever we want to call it, and then I'm going to just bring down any of that extra, bringing it into the body, and whatever is too much extra bulk, I'm going to just cut that off. And then I'm going to keep pushing that down until I got it framed into the size of the body of our cute little duck slash bird. And now I'm going to use a hammer. This is going to help me compress it because at this point it's getting kind of harder to squeeze with your hand. And I'm going to just keep playing with it until I get the shape that I want. The hammer is really useful in this part so that you can be able to get it nice and compacted. And this is turning into a really cool cast iron type piece of DIY to work with. I think these are so cool and you can make pretty much any shape you want. Now you can see I'm also using my pliers for those little tiny places that need to be squished a little bit more. And I'm also rocking and rolling across on my table. For the neck, I'm pushing it down a little bit so it doesn't look more like a goose. <laughs> <laughs> just keep playing with it until you get it to the sizing. Now at the back of the tail, I'm going to use my pliers again. I'm going to squish into that area, pinching it so you've got more of that bottom feather pointed look at the end. And then I'm going to come in one more time with my hammer and just make sure everything is nice and tight and compacted. And once I've got it exactly the way I want it to look, we're now going to take some painter's tape because you really can't paint foil and you really can't hot glue with foil, it's best to cover it with painter's tape. So do your very best to just wrap that painter's tape around the shape of your little duck or bird and then go ahead and cut off anything that's extra. Keep pulling it tight so that you get that shape in there exactly the way you want it to. And then once everything is all nice and secure and you've got all of those little tiny pieces of foil that are showing, we don't want to see that so that the paint looks really nice and finished when we get this all done. We're then going to take a shish kebab stick. I poked a hole in it first and then I'm going to come in with some hot glue and glue that up in there. If you don't want to do these birds, go ahead and totally skip them. I really wanted the birds on my frames. So I'm going to go ahead and take some caulk and I'm just going to smooth that out with some water. And once it was all dry, go ahead and paint it black. Now you have these cool cast iron looking birds and we can punch a hole right in the top center of our mirror frame. And we're going to just take the shish kebab stick and put some hot glue on it and stick that right down into the hole. I feel like at this point, this is really starting to look like our inspiration and we are saving tons of money. I love figuring out things like this for my home and just making it my own. So once that glue is in there, go ahead, pop that frame back in. And now I'm gonna come in with some of that brown paint, some cinnamon, once it's dry, go ahead and dust off all the excess 
and then come back in with any black paint if you want to touch it up. And when you're all done, you have got yourself a beautiful knockoff. Look for less of those bird mirrors. For this DIY, I was on Amazon and I found these beautiful farmhouse containers. And I want you to see that when you go to the Dollar Tree, they have lots of different glass options and jars that you can work with. Go ahead and pick whatever jar you want. This is one that I have on hand. And then I'm gonna link these little knobs that I get from Amazon down below in my description box. Go ahead and take your drill and drill right into the center of your can lid or your jar lid. Take your time so that you don't, number one, hurt your table, and number two, hurt yourself. Go ahead and drill all the way through, and then I took outside my lid and spray painted it black, my jar I spray painted it white, and then I added some washers onto that screw because it was a little too long, added some hot glue up into the knob itself, and tightened it. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and bring in that rustic farmhouse look. You can always skip this part if this rustic look is not for you, but I just think it looks so pretty and we're going for that antique farmhouse look with this one. So go ahead, rough up your glass jar with some sandpaper. Go ahead and glue on your little garden tag that I get from the garden section at the Dollar Tree. I'm using some E6000 and hot glue, so it really bonds on well to the jar. And then go ahead and dust off that brown paint and cinnamon once it's all nice and dry. Touch up any of that rust look if it's a little too much for you. I just come back in with some brown paint and pat right on top and rub it into that cinnamon and it really gives it a realistic rust look. Then go ahead and put the lid on and you've got yourself a rustic antique farmhouse jar. I love containers like this for parties, but I did not want to spend $33.99 for this. So I headed to the Dollar Tree. I picked up one of these meatloaf pans or bread pans, and I'm going to go ahead and also grab one of these 3D wreath garden forms. And I'm going to just get to the biggest circle where it has these metal sticks that are coming down that's to bring it all together into one big piece, but we want to just be able to use the one biggest outer ring. Go ahead and cut right where that inner stick comes down, and we're going to go ahead and use our crocodile, punch out two holes on our pan, and we are now going to take this piece of wire. I'm going to do the length of my pliers. You can see that I put that right in the middle of the pliers, and then I'm gonna go right at the bin and then bend it again. So you've got this little arch in the wire. Then take that wire and you're going to take the end, put it into the hole that's closer to the inner part of the pan, push it down in there so you can pinch the wire's end up into the second outer hole, pull it up, wiggle it the best you need to, to be able to get it all the way out. And then you've now got yourself a darling handle. Now we wanna make sure it doesn't just flop all over the place cause that's not gonna be very useful. So we're now going to just take our pliers again. We're gonna bend down and start coiling it around the handle piece. And I just like to just keep coiling as tight as I can and working with it until I get it all the way to the very end. You could stop once you go once around, but I like to try to get it as tight as I can. And even then it's still gonna be a little bit wiggly. So I have another trick that we're gonna do in just a second 
but you're going to see here that I'm just wrapping it as tightly as I can around until I get all the way to the end of that piece. Once I do, flip it over and add some hot glue onto the bottom. This is really going to lock it into place, but you're going to need to hold it for about a minute or two while that hot glue dries and locks it into place. Now we're going to move on to that brown paint and cinnamon. I just love how this looks and I'm just going to continue that all the way around the pan in the spots that I want it to. Now you can see that against the black it's really standing out. I don't want it to look this rusty. So I'm just adding on a nice amount to start with. I'm going to dust off the excess and then I'm going to come in with that black paint. And then I'm going to just tap all around it, really working that in and getting that look. When you add that black paint onto the cinnamon, it really gives it that bubbly, rusty look. I thought these were so beautiful from Antique Farmhouse, but again, the biggest one was $42. There's no way. I don't want to pay that price. So I found this beautiful candle stem, this metal round corrugated plate, and this mesh wire trash can or basket, whatever we want to call it. I think it's a I think it's a basket. The bigger one at the Dollar Tree is the trash can for sure. Add on your E6000 and your hot glue, and here's just a tip. When you're doing these two glues together, try not to touch them because the hot glue will start to dry quickly once it touches that E6000. Find the center of that tray and put that on. And then once you've got it flipped over, add some nice goopy glops of that E6000 and then put on your mesh basket. Then while that E6000 is drying, I wanted to add on just a little bit more of this hot glue to help lock it in place so everything dries without moving or shifting. Now I'm going to come in with some brown paint <laughs> and some cinnamon and I'm going to work that all over my goblet meshed pedestal and once I've got it all dry I'm going to take my brush, dust off any of the excess and come back in with some black paint to touch up where I don't want it to be so rusty. And at this point you've got a beautiful container to display whatever you want in it. Friends, this video was so much fun for me to make because I really love to show how you can get that high-end look without paying a ton of money. Just make it your own. Now please do give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and you love Farmhouse like I do. And please subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new here or you've been watching for a while and just haven't decided yet that you want to stick around, I hope that you will. Now I'm going to recommend a couple videos here that are similar to this one. I hope you will check them out. and. Until the next episode, bye friends.